Hello viewer, welcome to Form 2 Physics. The topic is Magnetism and I'm going to be your teacher Benjamin Makanda. This is our first lesson, lesson 1. Stay with me. Now, to begin our, our lesson, we want to look at the specific objectives and by the end of this lesson, the learner should be able to describe the properties of magnets, explain the uses of magnets, Lesson review, we're going to look at the following area, description of properties of magnets, uses of magnets, then we are going to look at the summary of the lesson, followed by your assignment, that's the homework for the day. So to begin our lesson, let's look at the introduction to magnetism, and I have a short video for you here to help us understand what magnetism is. Wait. Right. 
Now from the video, we are now able to discuss what magnets are. And we can define a magnet as a material or object that produces magnetic field. This magnetic field is invisible, but is responsible for the most notable property of a magnet. A force that pulls on other ferromagnetic materials such as iron and attracts or repels other magnets. We are still explaining what magnetic field is. And we have just said there that this force is invisible, meaning that we are not able to see this particular force. We can't see it, but we can actually feel the effect of the force. So we are able to explain this from the diagram that we are seeing here. So this diagram here shows us uh, the magnetic field and magnetic lines of force, how they behave. And to begin with, we have a geographical sphere here. So we have geographic north, geographic south. These poles of the poles here are identified by the effects of our magnet. And this looks like the world. So we have the magnetic north and the magnetic south. These ones are detected, dictated by the use of what? The magnetic lines of force. You can be able to see the red arrows there. These arrows indicate the direction towards which the field of a magnet moves. As you're going to see later on in this topic, the magnetic lines of force always move from the North Pole to the South Pole, and the direction of the arrows actually satisfies this. So let's now look at properties of magnets, and to understand this, we want to have a demonstration of a video that will help us explain this. Now, look at this. The first property of magnet is that they have attractive property. Magnets attract magnetic substances like iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt. So you can see this magnet is attracting those magnetic substances. They are attracted to the magnet. That is the first property of a magnet. And that end shows that we have a strong force of attraction. The second property is the directive property. A freely suspended magnet always aligns itself in the north-south direction. So when a magnet is left resting, it rests with one end pointing to the north, the other one to the south. The other one is poles exist in pairs. If a magnet is broken into two parts from the middle, then each part is found to be a magnet. We can see this from the diagram there, this demonstration here, that you split a magnet, it has two ends. Magnetic property is maximum at the poles. At the end of the magnet, that's where we have strong force of attractions. So the forces at the poles are very, very strong. Now in summary, properties of a magnet can be summarized as attractive property. A magnet attracts magnetic substances like iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt. Directive property, a freely suspended magnet always aligns itself in the north-south direction. The third one, poles exist in pairs. If a magnet is broken into two parts from the middle, then each part is found to be a magnet. And the last property, magnetic property is maximum at the poles. Properties of magnets continue. Uh, poles, maximum poles at the center. These are the ends of magnets where magnetic force is strongest. So we are able to see, you can see the concentration of the field. These lines, we said, they show the direction of force of the, magnet, of the magnet, the magnetic lines of force. So at the end of the magnet, the magnetic lines of force are concentrated. They are actually 
close together, showing that the poles are, or the force is maximum at the poles. Directional property. When a magnet is suspended freely, it comes to rest in the north-south direction. So you take a magnet and you suspend it freely, it will rest in the north-south direction. As we can see from this demonstration here, one end is actually pointing to the north and the other end definitely to the south, which actually confirms the directional property of a magnet. Poles of magnets. Magnets have poles and these poles always exist in pairs. They cannot be separated. So poles of magnets cannot be separated. If we have a north pole, it therefore follows that a south pole should also exist. And if a south pole is there, then a north pole can also is supposed to exist. They cannot be separated. So poles of magnets exist in pairs. Attractive property. Magnets always attract objects made up of iron and steel. So look at this. Attraction property of a magnet. So we are seeing some symbols there which are indicating that these materials are being attracted by this particular magnet. Those materials that are being attracted by a magnet, we call them magnetic material because they have small substances that make them to be attracted to a magnet. The basic law of magnetism. Unlike poles attract, while like poles repel. This is the first law of magnetism. So let's look at this. So we have the North Pole, which is red, the South Pole, which is blue. So when you bring together the North Pole and the South Pole, they attract. The arrow shows that the South Pole is going to be attracted towards the North Pole. So that's why we are saying, unlike poles attract. In the second setup, we have the North Pole red, the South Pole red. What's the direction of the arrow? The arrow is pointing away from the North Pole of the other magnet that is being held. This means that the force of attraction is actually pulling away from this other one, is actually repelling. And that's why we are saying, like poles repel. And these are the first, this is the first basic law of magnetism. Test for polarity of magnets. So let's look at the test for polarity of magnets. So to test the polarity of magnets, we need this demonstration. We have two toys, a black toy and uh, a toy that is having some red color to your right. Now, look at these toys. So one of the toys has a pole that is indica indicated the south pole. If we look at the end of the poles, you are not able to tell. So this is the south pole. The sides of the toy do not have the poles. In between the toys, we don't have any force. So there's no any other magnetic material within this toy. It's all plastic. You can see. Then we push the toy to your right towards the black toy. What happens to the toy in front? It is moving away from the toy being pushed. You can see it's moving away. Yeah, we try the other one, the black one. Now the smaller toy is moving away. The smaller toy is moving away. And yet they are not in contact. They are not in contact. So we have an imaginary force in between the two toys that is forcing the other toy to move away. So let's try again. It's moving away. We push the smaller toy. The black toy is moving away. Yeah, it's moving away. It's very exciting, moving away, and yet they are not in contact. You can see this, eh? It's very interesting, moving away, but they are not touching. Test for polarity of magnets. So, there is always an attraction between a magnet and a magnetic material in or between the unlike pole of another magnet. But there is always a repulsion between the unlike pole of another magnet. Repulsion is the only sure way of testing for polarity of magnets. And that last point here can be demonstrated from the 
diagram or the video that we have just watched whereby when you push the first toy towards the other toy, the toy moves away. So we use the word repulsion. The other toy is repelling, meaning that it's also a magnetic material. Now from this diagram here, look at the first setup up there. South, south that are blue and the yellow arrows are indicating that the force of attraction, the force that exists between the two poles is pushing, is actually pulling apart. The, that direction of the arrows indicate that we have repulsion that exists between identical poles. The like poles south-south, we, we are going to have repulsion. In the second setup, we have the north-north pole that are red. Again, the arrows are indicating that they are repelling from one another. They are moving away from one another. That's again repulsion, which is used to explain the polarity of magnets. In the last bit, the north and the south poles are placed side by side and the arrows are in indicating that they are actually being pulled together. That one is attraction. And remember, attraction cannot be used as a test for polarity of magnets because any other material that is not magnetic can also be attracted to a magnet. Therefore, the only sure test for magnet is polarity. Otherwise, otherwise attraction cannot be used as a test for polarity because magnet can attract any other material that is either magnetic including ferromagnetic materials. So we summarize by saying the test for polarity is a repulsion, not attraction. Now up to there, we come to the end of our lesson and before we call it a day, I have some questions for you that you will attempt. The first question, define the following. A magnet, ferromagnetic material, magnetic material. Then question two, a form two student from Elim TV placed a magnet in a bottle containing ion fillings. After some time, she removed the magnet and recorded her observation. Using a diagram, explain the observation she made. These are the two questions that we'll attempt during your study and when we meet in the next lesson we will be able to review the question before we move to our lesson number two and uh, i've been your, chem your physics teacher benjamin makanda until then stay tuned to lm tv